You're watching ABC4 News. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks so much for staying with us. Today we're talking about Safe Harbor and their new Lifeline Prevention Center that will be holding a ribbon cutting ceremony tomorrow. And lucky for us, we've got Kristen Floyd, the executive director of the Safe Harbor Crisis Center, and then Liza Springmeyer, the capital campaign manager of Pathway Associates. So a lot to talk about here. You both have very big titles, but the bottom line is you're ready to do a lot of good for the community. So let's start off um, with what is Safe Harbor? And uh, Kristen, we'll start with you on that one. Yeah, so Safe Harbor is a domestic violence and sexual assault crisis center. We serve Davis County, so we work with victims that have been got, have gone through domestic abuse or any type of sexual assault, and we provide advocacy, sexual assault nurse examinations, shelter services, and help with housing. Really, it's one, you're able to do so many things. One with, stop. With the resource that mm -hmm. you guys have there. And let's talk about the need for these resources here in Utah, because I think a lot of people, I've probably been one of them at times when I just kind of bury our head in the sand and think that's not happening here. But unfortunately, that's just not the case. Unfortunately, Utah is one of the highest states in the nation for domestic abuse. One in three individuals will be affected by domestic abuse, and that that uh, statistic is staggering. And we, with COVID and with other situations that have, have come up over the last couple of years, our request for services have more than doubled. Okay, and talk about this new facility what it's gonna do and what it will be able to help you to further the help that you are giving right now. The new facility is actually one of three phases of expansion and it will allow, allow us to serve almost uh, 5,000 additional Davis County residents that wow. have been affected by this. So that particular uh, facility will help us uh, provide free therapy, children's services, advocacy, help with protective orders, a wide variety of services that victims really need when they're coming out of those unhealthy relationships. Now, Liza, I know you've been helping on kind of the campaign effort because in order to do this, it takes a lot of money. So why for you personally <laughs> is this such an important thing to help make come to fruition? Well, I think our communities are only as safe as the households within them. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to me that we work hard to make our community safer and to make people feel feel safe to reach out for support earlier in the, the crisis cycle. Mm -hmm. um, we, we don't want people to have to move into the emergency shelter or, or transitional housing, and that's why we're so excited about this Lifeline Prevention Center, so that people can seek services earlier um, hopefully before crisis. I love that. So talk to us about the event tomorrow and how we're kind of celebrating the new opportunity that this presents. Yeah, we are so excited. We have, uh, you know, quite a few of our donors that have been able to help us make this come to fruition. So from three to six is our open house. From four to five is our actual program uh, where we'll be able to honor some of those donors like Intermountain Ho um, Hospital and the Omero U and, uh, you know, the county and the state in helping us get this done. And so we want to be able to honor them and the staff and the volunteers that have helped us put all this together. So from four to, s four to five is the program, from three to six is the entire open house. The public is welcome and we would love to have people come and be able to see what this what this facility is all about and really celebrate with us. So after the celebration tomorrow, Friday, is it here we go, we're, we're, we're to work? Yeah, we're open and we okay. invite people to come in and, and really access these services. And, and Liza, we have a few minutes here, uh, a few seconds rather. How can the community help in furthering this? And, and I, I love what you said about how we all need to be safe. So how can the community help in that effort as well? I think being the eyes and ears, of our community and, and reaching out to Safe Harbor if we see something, mm -hmm. um, but also we need financial support. So um, as Kristen mentioned, this is the first of three phases for this project. Um, it's We've raised over $7 million for this project, but it's a $10.5 million project. So we need the community to help us raise that last 3.5. And if anyone would like to get involved or know someone that this project might speak to, mm -hmm. please let us know. Fantastic. Ladies, thank you so much for thank being you. here and all the good that this is doing for our community. Again, more information, opportunities to donate, opportunities to volunteer, all online right there at safeharborhope.org. Thank you so much to both of you. Thank you. Okay, Rich, over to you.